Neil Ratarotak here with a story. So, earlier in the week, I posted Locomotive Breath by Jethro Tull off the Aqualung album. And it reminded me of the days when I was road manager for Edgar, White, Edgar Winter's White Trash, and we opened for Tull in 1971 when they were out on tour supporting the Aqualung album. <laughs> now, the song Aqualung came about after Ian Anderson's wife, Jenny, who was an amateur photographer, showed Ian some pictures she had taken in London of a homeless man. Now, the pictures affected him, and he couldn't get the image of that man out of his head. Ian later said, I had feelings of guilt about the homeless, as well as fear and insecurity with people like that who seem a little scary. And I suppose all of that was combined with a slightly romanticized picture of the person who is homeless, but yet a free spirit who either won't or can't join in society's prescribed formats. <laughs> now the name Aqualung came to Anderson when he was watching the old Lloyd Bridges TV show, Sea Hunt. Now, how many of you out there watch that show? I know I did as a kid, and it was probably the first time I saw people go underwater with a breathing apparatus. And, you know, in the show, there was lots of heavy underwater breathing through the breathing apparatus that they wore, which were called aqualungs. And Ian compared the homeless man's unhealthy breathing to the deep diver sounds, which actually referred to the aqualung that the divers were using. Now, another interesting fact about the song is that it was never released as a single. Back in the day, there were three-minute singles on AM radio and longer album tracks played exclusively on FM. And because of that, some groups like Led Zeppelin didn't release singles, and Aqualung fit into that category. Let's listen to a little. I am little girls with bad intent. We know a lot about that these days, don't we? It's not running down his nose. Listen to these lyrics, man. They were cool as shit. All right. So, the song and concept meant so much to Ian that Tull's manager, Terry Ellis, commissioned Burton Silverman to paint a watercolor portrait of the character Aqualung. Ellis had seen Silverman's work in Time magazine and had been duly impressed. So Silverman <laughs> photographed Anderson wearing his old coat and the resulting picture looked a lot like an old haggard version of Ian. Very unusual effect. Takes out all the frequencies and that's just the frequency you hear on a car radio. <laughs> so, the picture. Ian was not pleased and wished Silverman had stuck with the homeless man in Jenny's original picture, but he was overruled and as we all know, that cover became one of rock and roll's iconic images. <laughs> Okay, now, back to 1971. Another reason I would try and catch the song Aqualung was to hear Martin's excellent guitar solo. Now, I thought Martin was very underrated, and I was happy to see that solo from Aqualung rated in the top 100 by Guitar World magazine. So I gotta tell ya, it was another one of those tours that was a strange combination. And I have to be honest, as good as Toll was, 
There were nights that white trash blew them away. <laughs> but there was mutual respect amongst the two bands, and we really appreciated the opportunity to tour with such a big act, and they, for the most part, like what we were doing as well. All right, so that's my story. I hope you enjoyed it. Neo Ratna Rock Doc, have a great day, and I'll see you with another story tomorrow. Take it away, Tom. Play that guitar. All right, everyone. See you tomorrow. Bye.